So we've talked about these integrated rate laws. Sometimes they become very complex. And so there are methods that experimentalists use to simplify the results. And one of these experimental approaches to this kind of complicated rate law is something known as a isolation or flooding experiment. And I'm going to use the abbreviation EXPT because I don't like to write experiment all the time. So what you do in this, experiment, in this kind of an experiment is you make the concentrations of all species but one very, very high. In order to understand this, let's look at an example. And we'll see how we can use this analysis to look at a reaction that we talked about previously and see how we can get to the rate law in a somewhat different manner. So we saw previously that the rate for this particular reaction, the rate law, could be written in terms of the rate constant times the concentration of peroxydisulfate ions times the concentration of I minus ions. The integrated rate law for even this simple of an expression is very complicated. In fact, if it gets much more complicated than this, you can't solve for the integrated rate law in closed form and you have to start doing numerical analyses. A simpler way is to use this experimental procedure to isolate one of these species. So let's see how that works. Let's set our experiment up so that we make the initial concentration of peroxydisulfate ions much, much bigger than the iodide concentration. So as the iodide decays, it will take away some of the S2082 minus, but this is not going to change much. There's an overwhelming amount of this. So what that means then is that this will remain constant or effectively constant throughout the reaction. So if I write my rate law, which I can now write in terms of the change in the concentration of my reactant iodide with respect to time, I put in a factor of a third to take account of the stoichiometry. This now becomes the rate constant, which we had before, times the concentration of S2O8 to minus, which we're saying is effectively not changing. So I can put these two things together into one constant, and then sitting out at the end is the iodide concentration, which is changing with time. Now what we do is we integrate this rate law. And if we integrate this rate law, what we find is that the iodide concentration goes from its initial value, I minus, and decays through first order kinetics where the decay constant, rather than being the initial real rate constant, is actually the rate constant times this peroxydisulfate ion concentration. So this is the equation we found in the limit where we've kept this S2082 minus concentration very high. And this effective rate constant, K prime, is actually equal to, including the stoichiometry, three times the real rate constant times the S2082 minus concentration that we set in excess. We would call this particular case a pseudo first order reaction or pseudo first order kinetics, as far as the integrated rate law for I minus, it looks first order, but hiding in this effective rate constant is the concentration of S2082 minus. So if I didn't know the order of this reaction with respect to S2082 minus, I could vary this concentration and see how K prime varies. So this is a way that we can pull apart a very complicated rate law by looking at the integrated rate uh, dynamics of one particular species with all of the rest of them in excess.